So let's continue to go through materials today. I think materials and lighting, which are the next couple of videos that I'm covering, are pretty much the most important part of this tutorial. They determine whether your scene looks photorealistic or not. As you can see up till now, everything still looks pretty bad. <laughs> but once you know how to apply good materials and good lighting to the scene, that will determine how good your scene looks. So as a start, I just want to go through some very basic uh, material notes. Uh, as an introduction, I won't go through every single one of them. I just go through those that I use frequently. Uh, but first of all, I want you to go to this link, okay, cc0textures.com and download this bricks texture. So we, we use the 8K ones. So basically, um, we, we use this bricks texture for our project. And also, I just want to say that give a shout out to CC0 Textures. They, their textures are all public domain, so you can use use them uh, for your own projects. And they are completely free, so I would uh, encourage you to support them. Okay, and so download this Bricks Texture, and then uh, we will continue in the next section. So once you have downloaded the Bricks Textures, um, unzip them, and then let's import them into our Unreal Engine, uh, so we can import and then let's import all of them. Okay. Uh, you may ask me, do we have to use 8K for every single textures? Uh, can we use 4K or 2K? I would say I don't use 8K for every single textures. It's way overkill. But for the bigger the, the stuff that are uh, used in in a wide surface area, of course, I'll go for the 8K. So the walls and textures for the floors and the ceilings, I will use 8K. Other than that, I think 2K is fine. You know, um, in fact, 8K is a bit of an overkill. You can use 4K if you want. I feel, uh, um, it, you know, so it's really up to you. Okay, so let's just uh, wait for this import. Okay, so I will let's create a new material and I will use this new material to quickly go through some of the notes. So first let's create a material called wall bricks. Uh, I will start with an M wall bricks and call it master. Okay. So a few notes so let me just quickly go through base color i'm sure you are familiar we can put in a constant tree to have a kind of like a uniform color but most of the time we use a a texture to input it into a, the base color okay so when we put in our bricks texture it will of course uh, put in a, a bricks texture into the base color but as you can see it doesn't look good so all these other maps are important okay so um, metallic will determine how metallic uh, uh, texture looks so it determines the metallic property um, okay a, a, a brick may not be the best example but let's say we have a gray color okay I just put a 0.5 okay so this is a, a, a roughly a gray color uh, whitish gray so if I put a metallic value of zero, it will be completely matte, non-metallic. But if it is one, it will be metallic. Okay, so as you can see, it will be metallic. Roughness as well. Um, usually, I just uh, um, put in a, a map. But rough, if it is uh, zero roughness, means it is completely smooth. Okay, if it is one roughness, means it will be matte. Okay, so. So if you usually roughness and metallic, we will we will input in a, a texture map. Okay, normal map um, is very important. Um, usually, normal map will will define the the minor details of the textures. Okay, so they use the red and the and the green channel to determine uh, kind of like simulate give a, a, a um. You know, it's 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 like a visual trick um, to put into the texture to show to show the height 
but it is not exactly a height map okay there's another way to do it but a uh, normal map usually is important to to show the minor minor details on the texture okay so we'll put it into normal and the last one is uh, um, one that we normally use is texture coordinate so so let's just use this brick wall as an example first okay so when I have a brick wall let me assign this so as you can see it is a bit too big so we use texture coordinate to uh, determine the size of the texture okay so the bigger the size the smaller the texture the more repetitive it is so let's say I put 5 by 5 on the texture coordinate so when I save it will become smaller okay so that's one of the more important nodes that we use the other one is uh, there's a height map okay normally if you if you download a uh, textures they will provide you with a displacement texture or height texture so usually um, I will use the bump offset uh, node to kind of simulate this texture again it is uh, using a visual trick it doesn't actually change the the um, what's the word the polygon count or the polygon of the of, of the wall itself you know it's just using some kind of visual trick to make it looks like things are jutting out okay so um, there is another way to actually use uh, polygons to actually uh, make the texture looks like it, it is jutting out and that's using tessellation but uh, I won't go through tessellation in this tutorial because most of the interior stuff that we do we uh, the bump offset node is useful enough so tessellation we usually use it for more organic stuff like you know forest grounds and stuff like that so uh, so yeah we will use bump offset uh, the other the other one that uh, we will use often is lerp or linear interpolate basically is uh it's a way to to mix two textures together and then we pump in an alpha to kind of mix them together so uh, i'll show you how to use it further along the tutorial but yes that's basically some of the more basic notes that uh, we use for materials but of course uh, it is how you use them they will determine how good your materials are right so uh, the first thing of course if is to get a high resolution because um, the the thing about VR and about real time is that you can actually move around and if you go very near them you know you don't want the textures to be to be blurry you want you still want them to be sharp so so a high resolution texture especially for this big features uh, big walls and then floors are actually pretty important so you will want to use at least 4k for some of these uh, walls i think that's it, it may sound very simple sound very logical you know it's like common sense but it is very important so please if find good good textures is uh, half the battle one high resolution textures okay so so that's about it for the for some of the basic stuff and then uh, we'll create individual materials now for all our stuff inside and i'll go through them uh, in more depth okay so let's continue to make our bricks wall texture but before that i um, just want to do a quick lighting build because uh, at this moment when i do when i view the project in a lead mode there's nothing so i just want to do a quick light build so that we can at least see um, some of the materials that we create in a in a better format than an unlit format you know so with some nice shadows and stuff like that we get a better picture of the materials we are creating so um, some preliminaries that we want to bring into the project um, or rather some of this uh, stuff that we learned previously things like a box reflection capture okay um, and also our light mass importance volume stuff like that so to prepare us for a light build okay so I added a, a box reflection then I'm gonna add a light mass portal yeah 
Okay. So just a just gonna extend this a bit. In our previous videos, I shared that this is important to tell Unreal Engine that this is where light is coming into the scene, and then a light mass importance volume. And then um, we have, uh, uh, I want a post processing volume. So I want to turn off the exposure. Let's make it infinite. And dash, where is my exposure? There you go. So let's set it to zero, zero. And then I'll bring in a skylight. Set it to static. Use the Barcelona environment HDRI. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick build. Nothing, uh, no changing on the light mass or stuff like that yet. So, and a preview build. So once I'm done, we'll come back with the video. So I've, I've done building, but it seems like the the um, area is still a bit dark so I'm going to increase the skylight intensity a bit to 5 and the indirect lighting as well and I'll build again okay so I'll see you after it finished okay so it's a bit brighter now um, but still not too bright but instead of uh, increasing the skylight what I want to do now is maybe we just adjust the exposure a bit of course all this when we do our final light build uh, we, we, we can um, you know adjust the exposure but for now I think uh, this is good enough so I changed the exposure to minus 3 you know maybe minus 2 is also okay yeah so I think we have a, a scene that we can work on the materials now uh, so let's continue okay so now we are ready to make the brick wall materials and before we continue, I just want to let you know that I've included two grunge maps uh, in our project. It's more of uh, to, to remove the repetitiveness. I'll show you how to do it later, but uh, do take note uh, of these two maps. It's, it's pretty important. You know, so, so yes, let's continue. Okay, so back to our brick walls. Uh, I want to create a, a more robust texture coordinates. Uh, for the controlling so what I'm, I'm doing now is uh, I want to create um, our multiplier okay so what I can do is first we use a constant tree okay so instead of specifying here and then having to change I'll use the red and the green channel to specify the the values and then we can create it as a, as an instance material to change it uh, on uh, on the project itself Okay, so let's put uh, one by one. Okay, and then I will then multiply this, uh, convert to parameter first, call it UV size. Okay, and then um, uh, I will have a append node and append the red and the green channel and then multiply it to the texture coordinate. So apart from controlling the size, I also want to be able to manipulate by shifting it left to right and up and down. Okay, so so that's where we want to also add on to our texture coordinate nodes. So again, um, it's very easy. We will just copy this, right? Duplicate this, and then rename it to UV position. Okay. And instead of multiplying, we will add on to it. Yeah, so so this entire node will then be called uh, our texture coordinate master node. Okay, we can maybe just press C and, and call it um, texture coordinate node. Okay, so let's move on. 
so now we're going to create a bump offset node okay so bump offset um, is for us to fit the height map or displacement map okay so it's very simple just call out the bump offset all right i use a very simple one and then um, bring in our displacement map and we attach the red channel to our height okay can you see so red channel to our height and then remember to attach our texture coordinate node to our to both our height map and to the coordinate map okay if you don't if you don't do this, if you don't attach the texture coordinate to the height map, you'll realize that um, your bricks have different, your the height of the bricks have different size to the actual material itself. So remember to attach your texture coordinate to both the bump offset and the height map. And then after that, we will then um, fit the texture coordinate information through the bump offset into the UV node of uh, all the other uh, textures like the base material and even normal okay so remember to feed it to the normal and then after that we can then uh, fit this normal node to the normal okay so remember to do that so now I also want to um, create a normal multiplier so sometimes in my materials I want to have the ability to control the strength of the normal map that I use uh, sometimes I don't want it to be too uh, strong sometimes I need it to be stronger to to show even more of the details so I will create a normal multiplier usually for my materials so again normal multiplier we use a multiply node okay then we connect the RGB and we use a constant tree node right and then convert parameter to normal multiplier right so uh, we can just fit the rgb node into the multiply node but make sure that the your rgb value is one okay so your for normal multiplier we are also using the r and g value to control the strength but the b has to be zero so uh, that's how a normal map works okay so if you change um if you change the values your b have your blue value have to remain as one so that the others can can be used to control the strength of the normal okay so again uh, please take note of that and then we can then fit our our normal map to the normal input right uh, i'll also input the roughness map so remember all this okay input it to the uv so i have displacement normal color and roughness i seldom use the ao map you know so because i find usually it doesn't look right if i if i fit the ao map so i think for now this is looking good let's move on okay so this is our brick wall you know it's as you can see it's looking really really good now compared to just creating a normal um, brick material I mean just using the the base material you will see that uh, when you add the height map and the, you know and the normal map it looks a lot a lot more much better yeah so this has some shape some some 3d effect to it you know I'm uh, not sure if you can see but let's just do a quick comparison I mean I, I create one where it's just a base material Okay, just for a quick comparison, you realize that just simple stuff like that will make your scene look so much better. You know, so I I create a material that is just based on base material. As you can see, it is so much different. Yeah, so adding your normal map, adding your uh, height map, it makes a lot of difference. So. Uh, when we create material instance so just to show you what we have created you know uh, so of course we can have we have the normal mu multiplier so if we multiply the RNG you can see that the normal strength is a lot more so sometimes this helps 
sometimes this doesn't but it's good to to know how to use them okay and then you uv position you can you can uh, shift them left or right up and down yeah so up to you and then of course the uv size again you can shift them uh, bigger or smaller it's up to you yeah so so that's uh, my brick material and the last part I want to kind of like break up the repetitiveness because now um, it looks like a perfect brick walls of course uh, I've chosen a decent brick uh, texture so there are like some brick cups here and there which already makes it look a bit more organic but I want to use the grunge map to kind of like add some organic feel to it so let's continue okay so a very simple way to use the grunge map would be to just to simply multiply but in this instance I, I will show you it won't look as nice okay so we can multiply by the grunge map okay so you see that or oh, doesn't look as good right so what I'm gonna do is basically use to the linear interpolate uh, function so the linear interpolate function takes two input a and b and then um, uses the the alpha channel to determine which one of the colors uh, it will take so if it is pure white it will take a if it is pure black it will take b you know so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a variation of these bricks material you know and then um, lock them together so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply let's remove this multiply first I'm gonna multiply this by another color just to have like a slight tint to it okay just a simple pinkish tone to it you know so when I multiply these two, I will have the same material, but it's darker red, uh, a slight thin difference. Okay, then I'm gonna fit this multiply uh, and the original one, and I'm gonna use the lock, okay, to fit them. Okay, so this will look a lot uh, more organic again. So instead of having a black and white as the as the input I'm just using a variation of these two um, brick material so as you can see it look much better now but maybe not as much yet you know I'm gonna change a little bit uh, of the tint okay maybe not as red so just a very subtle change you know we don't have to you know go all the way out but really all these things is about small minor changes attention to detail and uh, you will you will definitely get a nicer looking scene like that so you can see now that there are, there is some organic feel to it it's not repetitive around here is slightly darker red and stuff like that so of course you know i'll leave it to you what kind of tint you want but again this tint we can also parameterize it okay so and this texture I also can parameterize it so that I can change my crunch okay so so let's say I want to use other kinds of crunch map I can you know so I'll just show you the changes if possible so if I change this crunch the feel looks different as well so you know this is a very good uh, simple but yet very effective way to make your scene looks a lot more organic you know so now your brick wall doesn't look like it's repetitive it looks like it is like real you know so uh, I'm very happy with my brick wall so all I have to do now for the rest of the scene is to just create material instances you know they, the the color um, I mean the color and the UV um, or rather the color would I would use the same or maybe just a bit of variation but all I have to do is to change the UV 
to make it look uh, more real so as you can see this one is a bit more squished up than this so I have to change the UV value you know the UV size to slightly smaller you know and stuff like that so maybe I just choose 0 0.8 0 0.8 yeah uh, so it's really up to you how, how you um, experiment with all this and uh, there's no hard and fast rule to uh, to this you know a slight difference to make it look a little bit more organic so so yes I will leave you to apply the rest of the bricks material to um, to the scene and then we'll come back okay okay so I have uh, added the bricks textures to the walls and um, as you can see the scene is looking a lot better now than when we first import it in so as you can see it's just a simple bricks textures and it uh, you know it makes a lot of difference a simple light build you know we haven't even go all the way to the light settings yet we are just using a normal preview build and and I think it's, it's looking better now so um, as you can see the importance of materials is 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 just there so it's good to learn how to make good materials and they are they are the techniques they have shown you are pretty simple techniques you know and I've used them in all my projects you know they don't have to be so complex right so I think the next part that I want to go through before I end this video is just to create some form of uh, black metal material right now it's just a, a, a black uh, material so I just want to go through a bit how I create the, the metal for, for the eye beams okay so let's continue you know just analyzing a simple black metal you know a, a, a steel that is painted black you realize that very often they are not you know smooth entirely they have some sort of a, 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 a rough kind of feel to it with some of these grainy feels to, to it you know uh, especially you know places like this you can see so to create exactly like this it will be pretty difficult unless you use software as like substance designer and stuff like that but we just want a quick way to do this so how, how do we do this so for, I find that um, using a normal map you know like for a road a asphalt road uh, can help in uh, in creating or simulating a feel like that so uh, you just just Google something uh, called an asphalt normal map and then uh, we can create our black steel so I was googling around for a asphalt kind of normal map and I found this so let's try using this to, to see if we can create a good metal material okay so I'm just going to import this let's create a new folder called black industrial metal okay so just importing the normal map you'll see how it looks like okay so first we create a material called M black steel okay um, nothing fanciful I'm just use a constant to create its black color maybe 0 0.005 and another constant to give it a pretty metallic look okay maybe 0.95 so if you if you just use this and assign it to the eye beam doesn't really look spectacular I feel okay so let's wait for it to render okay so um, nothing spectacular so I'm gonna add the normal map and let's see how it looks Okay, so I think it needs a bit of work so let's continue to work on this okay first I want to create a texture coordinate for the normal map okay I'm, I'm not interested in appending I'm just interested in multiplying Oops. constant tree UV 
Paris. Multiply. Append. Sorry, what I meant was I'm not interested in adding instead of, uh, but I just want to multiply. Okay, so I also want to create my normal multiplier because I feel it's a bit too strong. Okay, let's assign one, one, one. Assign one, one to this. Okay, so let's play around with the values that we created. Okay, create material instance. Okay, first of all, I think we need to increase the size a bit. Let's do it five by five. Okay, so when you do 5x5, five five, it looks a bit better. I may need to look for a more a higher resolution normal map. You know, so... So this is already better. Of course, from far, it doesn't look that bad. But when nearer, it looks a bit pixelated. So we may have to find a higher resolution one. Or we can try increasing the repetitiveness. Yeah, this is perhaps slightly better. And, you know, I don't want it to be too strong. So my normal multiplier, let's play around with 0.5. So something like that, you know, it, I think maybe it is too fine. So let's change to 20 by 10. Yeah, I think this is something that I can accept. So as you can see, uh, maybe it's a bit too stretched out. Yeah. So you just have to play around with the figures, you know, how, how it all looks and feel, right? Until you are happy with this, okay? So I think, uh, I'm slightly happy, not too happy yet, but for now, I think this is good enough until I find a better normal map. I think this is good enough for my, um, for my IBM. Okay. So this one way to create, I think you can continue to Google around, uh, for a better normal map. I will uh, Google around and, uh, I will include, a normal map that uh, that I think is suitable in the final project file. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video and stay tuned. So before we end, I just want to share a bit more on how you can support the channel. So first of all, um, all the PowerPoint files that we use in this tutorial, you can download it. So when you download the PowerPoint files and any project files that we give to the channel to Gumroad. Your email will be um, captured by us. So we will send some marketing materials in the future if you allow us to do so. Of course, you can choose to opt out, but this will help us in our marketing efforts. Of course, um, the final UE4 project file, uh, it will be for sale as well. So if uh, it, is, it is priced at a usual tutorial cost fee, but this is absolutely not compulsory. So if you feel you want to support the channel, you can get the UE4 project file um, for a price. So all these links, uh, as we are preparing for the YouTube uh, videos, we will slowly add all these files into our Gumroad page. So some are not ready yet, some are already can be downloaded. So you can refer to the YouTube description for the links to where to download this project files and also I just want to share with you the way to contact us we have a YouTube channel um, you can contact us directly through email and of course 
the easiest way to find us actually is through our Facebook channel. You can directly message us. So these are the links to where you can contact us if you have any questions, you need any help. Uh, feel free to just look for us. Uh, of course, um, if you can remember to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification button. So when we post a new video, you'll be notified. Thank you and I'll see you in the next lesson.